Hello friends, welcome back to The Parsonage. I'm Pastor Don of First United Methodist Church of Brazoria and it's time for another stay-at-home daily devotional and not just any daily devotional but the 50th daily devotional of this series. Yay! On page 102 of the United Methodist Hymnal you'll find the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. It was written during the Thirty Years' War in Germany by Martin Rinkert, a Lutheran pastor in the town of Eilenburg. And Eilenburg was then a haven for war refugees and well the city soon became crowded and food supply became short. Then a famine struck and then a terrible plague. In one year alone, get this, Pastor Rinkert conducted funerals for 4,500 people including his own wife. However, amazingly, he never lost courage or faith even during the darkest days. Now thank we all our God, he writes, with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done in whom the world rejoices. Keep us in His grace and guide us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next. Even when he was, well, waist deep in destruction, Pastor Rinkert was able to lift his sights to a, a higher plane. He kept his mind on God's love when the world was filled with hate and he never forgot to thank God for being God. And being with him through it all. With that as context, consider then this event recorded only in Luke's Gospel. Quote, on the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And they went, and they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a, a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Jesus unconditionally healed ten lepers, but only one. 10% returned and thanked Jesus. Can you imagine receiving the gift of salvation from Christ and then not thanking Him? I, in his wonderful book entitled Together in Christ Sermons and Prayers for the Christian Year, Pastor Erskine White shared nine uh, interesting reasons or excuses why only one out of ten of the lepers returned and thanks, thanked Jesus. He said one of them waited to see if the cure was real, one waited to see if it would last, one said he would uh, see Jesus uh, you know, later, one decided that he had never really had leprosy in the first place, one said that he would have gotten well, you know, anyway. And Well, one of them gave glory to the priests. One said, oh well, Jesus didn't really do anything. One said, any rabbi could have done it. One said, I was already much improved. Then Pastor White added, quote, that's not surprising, is it? I doubt there that more than 10% of us are ever truly grateful to God. In fact, it often seems that the more we have, the less gratitude we feel. One possible practical illustration of this might be seen in our, well, our covenantal giving. The Hebrew Bible tells us, quote, all tithes from the land, whether the seed or from the ground or the fruit from the tree are the Lord's. They are holy to the Lord, unquote. Now, tithe is a Hebrew word meaning tenth or one-tenth. And the Old Testament calls for giving God one-tenth of annual earnings. Now, Jesus called 
for far more. He called for 100%, you know, take up your cross and follow me. There's no bargain basement on the cross, friends. In reality, though, the average giving by percentage of Protestant Christians is actually around 2 to maybe 2.5% two annually. At least the lepers gave 10% as a thank you. Hmm. Now, I'm not trying to pick your pockets, but to use our, our giving as an example of perhaps where our hearts really are. Our Lord said, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. But hopefully, friends, and I sincerely mean this, I hope our hearts are far more than 2.5% thankful to God. Maybe, maybe we're not as thankful as we'd like because of the seeming realities of the world. Maybe they've discouraged and dispirited us to the point of not wanting to sing, Now thank we all our God, but rather to, to shout Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But once upon a time, a man stumbled upon a great red barn after wandering for days seeking refuge from the howling winds of a terrible storm. Inside he discovered where the devil kept his storehouse of seeds to be sown in the hearts, in the hearts of humans. And he couldn't help but notice that most of them were labeled seeds of discouragement. And about that time, one of the devil's helpers arrived to pick up a load of seeds. And the man asked him, why the abundance of discouragement seeds? And the helper, well, he sort of laughed and he replied, because they are so effective and they take root so very quickly. Do they grow everywhere, the man asked? He glared at the man and in disgust, he said, no, they never seem to grow in the hearts of grateful people. Moral of the story, perhaps we'd be more encouraged if we were more thankful, more grateful. Discouragement, friends, sets in when we fail to see all that God is doing for us all the time and start cynically complaining, well, what have you done for me lately? It's about as foolish as missing the forest while complaining about all the trees. St. Paul was, well, he was forever encouraging his little churches in the midst of all sorts of challenges, persecutions, and crises. Quote, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. My friends, perhaps it's time we learned a lesson from Pastor Rinkert and from the one leper. We need to be thankful and we need to be encouraging and not just with our words or our wallets, but with our lives. We need to live as though we not only take Jesus at his word, but that we are forever grateful for his words and his deeds. As Rinkert wrote, Oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us still in peace and guide us when perplexed, and free us from all ills in this world and the next. Grace, peace, and good health always, and have a blessed day.